All right, we're live. Here we are, sitting here in the fly shop at the end of the day. And I am about to tell you guys my new fly pattern. We're calling this one Patches. Patches O'Houlihan. If you've seen the movie Dodgeball, you know it's got a dodge, dip, dive, duck, and dodge. And that's what this fly does. So rightfully named Patches of Houlihan. And that's it. Uh, I've caught my last six muskie on this fly. So it is, uh, it is doing, doing me very well. What I really like about this fly is the hook placement. It's a single hook with two shanks gives it a ton of articulation and movement but that hook placement placement is at the perfect center of this fly so when a musky t-bones it you're going to hook him every time you don't need two hooks you don't need uh you know trailer hooks this and that it's just about having the right action of the fly and the right hook placement the size of the profile uh, matters a good bit. Uh, the way it pushes water, the way it looks and swims in the water is, in my opinion, the most important part. The colors, not so much, though this does imitate a sucker, uh, you know, a, a fall fish. Um, but the way a, a fly swims and that hook placement is the most important part. So here we are. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's tie one of these up. You're going to start with your uh, Gamagatsu B10 Stinger 5 aught. One of the best hooks there are. So, using the Norvice here, we're going to go ahead and change our hub out. We've got just the standard jaws on that. And we got the hook there in place. So I don't have much thread on this. I'm using uh, Vivas GSP 150. I don't have a ton of thread left, but I should have enough for this hook. So we'll put a nice thread base on the shank of the hook. Now since this is a tail, we're going to go... up a little bit we're not going to waste uh too much of that bend of the hook there because it's all going to be covered up i'm going to take uh some caramel and i'm going to use the top part of this tail because i don't need this to flare out at this point i just need uh need to create a little bump back there basically to Give the hackle, the saddle hackle, something to cause it to swim. Now here's a trick I've learned from Dom, Streamer King, shout out my dude. It's called a thread dam, or valley, and that creates uh, a nice place for that bucktail to sit down in and um, allows it to flare a little better. Now right here is not a crucial point for it, but... I've gotten the habit to always, always use that. So I'm going to start out by adding a little bucktail in that caramel brown collar. Again, this is the tail part. We're going to go with Bowen's rule of thumb hair feather and flash it's all you need in a good musky fly hair feather and flash i'm gonna do this one a little bit backwards i've got a mess of uh flash here this flash is by far my favorite flash for this pattern it is a very thin thin flash uh again it's very got a very big mess going on here should have uh should have dealt with this before I turned the camera on, but. We're gonna add a little bit more there. I like, I like this flash a lot. So we're gonna 
we're gonna go ahead and add a decent amount on there. We're just gonna stack this in there and then we'll brush it out because it's a it's an absolute mess right now. So I've got two wraps on it. I'm gonna manipulate that so it spreads that flash out a little bit around the hook and then I'm going to brush this back so it's got a nice flashy butt on it or tail as you would I guess fish don't really have butts they have tails since that was a mess I'm going to go ahead and brush that out using just a regular hair comb nothing fancy here Here we are. All right, now at this point we're gonna take a, a saddle hackle. This is um, the most strategic part here, is picking the saddle hackle that looks right, looks proportionate. Um, having a good saddle cape is really hard to come by, but it's the most valuable part when it, we're talking a good musky fly. Now since I don't want this super long I'm going to be wasting some of my favorite part of the tail there or hackle I should say now to do this we're going to lock this thing in the side we got some flash on our thread let's pull that off let's reposition this first there we go all right, we're gonna tie this into the side. And then I'm gonna bend that stem back and tie back over it. That's gonna lock it in there. So um, when a muskie does eat this, keyword when a muskie eats this, because he will eat this, it's not gonna pull all those hackles out. So the key is to, to lock this thing in there, and then we're gonna definitely glue it up really nice, so. Set that on. Again, the flash is giving me issues. Just pull that flash out of the way. There we sit with the first hackle on here. And that thing looks like it's swimming already. So I like just to use the old uh, Sally's hard as nails. I'm old school with this stuff. There's uh, really good products on the market. I really do like the Solar Res Bone Dry, but it's expensive and uh, honestly, for this kind of stuff, it's hard to beat the, the Sally's. Hard as nails, so here we are. We got some flash going. So within this fly, we're gonna do two more sections. We're gonna do somewhat of a body section now with white. No, with tan. We're gonna do another body section with tan, another hackle, and then white. And we're gonna start getting into a different type of flash there at the head. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and throw uh, another valley down. Just a little thread valley there. And uh, let's see, we'll use, we'll use this tan again. So this time I'm going to go a little bit farther down about Oh no, a quarter of a way down. Now we don't need to use very much, maybe uh, less than a pencil width. And we're gonna get all those little guard hairs out. That is key. You don't want all those little, little hairs and little fluff in there. We're not doing a reverse tie yet. We're just, we're just, 
tying this normal like you would stack any kind of bucktail on there. Now we're going to manipulate that around the hook. Just using your thumb. Now for this I like to start using this hair packing tool just to flare those butt hairs back. And then I'm going to create a, a dam in front again. There we are, starting to take shape. Now we're going to go with a, another hackle. Again, we're going to pick out the right part of this hackle cape. Getting to the end of this cape of having good fat tails or feathers, so we're going to be a little bit more selective with it. Um, but I got two right here that should work, so. We're going to hold it up and see bit roughly what the length is on our last one we put in. I did go a skosh long, just a little bit longer than I like to go with these but nonetheless it's going to work just fine now I'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit of uh, the sallies down what that does sometimes if you if you glue first it keeps this hackle locked in right where you want it it doesn't try to roll on you near as bad a lot of times uh, you'll fight these hackles on trying to roll on you. And though it's okay if they do, that one did kind of, um, It's they're still going to swim just fine in the water, but it's more for uh, personal preference or personal view than a muskie's view, but a muskie don't care. They're going to see something swimming in their zone and they're going to eat it. Hopefully. There you are. There's our second hackle. Nice. Alright. We're going to add just a little bit more of the crazy hackle or crazy flash here now this one I'm just going to get a little bit simpler with we're going to stack this on loose wraps just like that Nothing is perfect, but that's the key. All right, now we're going to get into our white. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, create my valley. The key is to give yourself a nice base. That's how this fly won't come apart on you. There you are. So let's go ahead and glue that. To me, a good durable fly needs to be glued. If you want this thing to last, you need to glue these. Now we're going to take some white bucktail. We're going to get into a little bit better of a, a cape. That caramel is not a very good tail. White here is pretty decent. Then we've got some long tails here in the peach uh, tequila sunrise. Now I'm being a little bit thicker with this, uh, this fly already than 
uh, my previous fly now. Granted, that fly has caught six muskie. It's definitely lost some hairs through that time, but the key is not to go too heavy with this stuff, not too thick. There we are. Start to flare that out. This fly is basically the 2.0 hunk of punk of pie fly. Uh, if you guys have watched that film, that was just a, a simple quick pattern we came up with that weekend before we went out and shot that film. Um, the fly worked. It was also a single single hook fly. A lot of people are, are really serious about these double hooks and for a long time I was too. I missed several nice muskie on, uh, on flies that only had single hook but what I've learned is that it's, it's not necessarily, necessarily the hook's fault, single hook fault, but really where the placement of that hook was. If you have a big tail, a lot of those pack tail flies which I do love the pack tails, but a lot of those flies have a really long tail off of it with a hook up front. So you've got a good, you know, five to six inch gap in between um, where that musky T bones and you just end up not getting a hook in him. So the placement of that hook is key to me. Let's go with hopefully a couple fatter flat fatter fatter tails here if I can find two that may work. Hair feather and flash. It's all you need. little bit short but she will work sometimes it's best not to make things too perfect or too symmetrical just let them be kind of naturally wild they tend to swim better that way and really it's uh, having the right type of hackle on this tail is really what matters they don't have to be symmetrical per se but they have to um, have the right size and flow for it to work for me. So there we go, we're gonna add a little bit of this flash on the top here, and then we're gonna move forward to our next shank. So, very good, we're just gonna start laying this flash down on this, kinda of spread it out around the hook. Two loose wraps, we're gonna manipulate that a little bit better. getting to the end of our thread so we just lucked out there to have enough to finish out that fly or that that back hook so there we are let's go ahead and put a whip finish in this I like to put a nice a nice thick thread wrap on the eye here that's going to keep it locked in there nice and secure so let's get this thing glued up one thing i like to do here at the end of this or it will reveal as the fly is swimming is i actually like to trim just uh the butt ends on this piece here now it's not crucial it'll swim just fine look just fine but you will see that a couple times. So. All right, let's get some glue on it, let her dry. I'm gonna go ahead and kick the cameras off, start a new 
video and I'm also going to take a break these flies take about an hour and a half to tie so it gets tiring my mic um, stand is actually sitting on the moonshine jar so here we go let's get a little hit of this wake you up all right here we go we're gonna put the first shank in now we're using the uh, Blaine chocolate articulate articulating big game 40 mil shanks now they just launched their new shanks I have yet to tie with them I'm excited about that they look like a really cool concept um, ordered some in we'll start tying with those soon but Let's go ahead and put the shank jaws on. Holds these shanks a little better, so. Lock that in. This is where the tubing comes in, the body tubing. If you guys have never tied with that, it's uh, a little bit tricky. And I forgot that I ran out of uh, GSP here, so give me one second. I'm going to go get a new spool on. Good to go. Back in it. All right, so let's go ahead and throw a nice thread base down. This flash is already in my way, I could tell. Just a good base. This is going to keep everything locked in well. You don't have to worry about it spinning on you or anything like that. So here we go. So now on this, we're going to do another run of the caramel. Then we're going to do body tubing. Then we're going to do white. And then body tubing, then white. So we've got three stacks of bucktail here. So the caramel it is. So let's go ahead and create the valley. Great. Caramel it is. Try to get a longer longer stack. Get those guard hairs out. Sometimes when I'm doing these videos, I forget that I'm actually recording. I get in the zone and how I like to tie and just relaxing here, thinking about being on the river, the different fish I've moved with these patterns, and kind of reminisce. But I'm going to try to keep walking you through this. Not get too quiet on you. But you just want to work that bucktail all the way around. Alright. That didn't work. So let's just do it by hand. So we got a little bucktail on there that's going to help hide, that darker color is going to help hide that segment. And this will be our last hackle for a little while. So let's pick a good one here, something that's going to have nice contrast with it. Picking through this tail trying to find uh, two at the right length that I'm wanting to go with here. All right, we got two matching here. Very good. We're gonna go ahead and run that. Make sure it's not going past the other tails. 
Same way, we're going to strip those first bit of hairs back. Loose wrap, loose wrap. Yep, I knew that was about to happen. No problem. So now we're going to do, we're going to glue this and we're going with our first stack of body tubing. If you've never used this body tubing before, it can be a pain to work with. You want to make sure you singe the ends. We're going to go ahead and glue down the bottom there. Notice I didn't put any flash in this section. It's going to be a little bit of a bare spot. Wrap that on. Get that right in that glue. You notice I've left that on just so I'm not wasting material, but I'm cutting this just at the, sh the length of the shank there. Singe that together. I like to go ahead and put a couple turns right here and lock that down. Now we got to turn this inside out, so we got to push this back, flip it just like that, and we're going to throw some more glue down. I didn't singe that very good, so it actually started coming apart, but it's all right it'll work just fine we're going to bring it back together with a little bit of loose wraps if you notice i went with a pretty pretty small piece here because i wanted to help build the taper of the overall fly go ahead and whip finish that off I really, really need to tighten up that shank. Go ahead and glue that down. And we'll flare that body tubing back now. Nice small piece. And that's just gonna help hold that bucktail. Give it more of a, that natural taper we talked about. I love these Norvices, they have their major advantages, but sometimes with these bigger hooks and shanks, it's hard to get them to lock down very well. Alright, so we're going to progress now with white. We're going to put a thing of white in the middle here. You've got plenty of room on this shank, so there's no reason to dam this thing up clear against that body tubing. We're going to step back a little bit from it. And that's, what that's going to do is allow it to create a little better shape. A little more of a natural taper and flow. But I do like to have a nice dam in front of that body tubing. So the way this is played out is it's right in between the, where those two um, shank ends come back together. There's a nice gap right in the middle. That's where we're going to put this stack of white bucktail. So again, we're going to go with some white bucktail about halfway up. A stack less than half of a pencil. Now it's a little bit bigger when I first cut it off, but I know there's gonna be a ton of guard hairs that come off of that. So I'm actually preparing for that. So by the end of it, you've got a very small amount there. Now I spin my thread 
so it creates more of an oval instead of a flat which helps to lock down this bucktail a little bit better. I'm going to work that around the shank of the hook just with my thumb and finger pushing, pinching, squeezing, manipulating that around once you got that spread out really well lock it down again that one does not work with those big shanks I tend to keep forgetting that too so got an old pin pin old school right there old pin cap before all these fancy tools came out we all improvised you just you just use what you had to make the job easier nothing was fancy nothing was designed for that yet it was just like just doing it so we're starting to get that taper it's nice and uh, nice and flared back at this point so we have uh, two things of body tubing here so we're going to do another stack of body tubing Uh, but first we need to add some flash in here. So this is a crucial part. I really like this orange Orange flash against that white and I personally think that stands out really nice Just like that. Go ahead and get some glue on there for the body tubing. This is our second stack of body tubing. I'm no way shape form or fashion a great tire what I've learned is uh, to tie a fly that catches fish and again it's about the movement to me how it swims in the water it's not necessarily exactly how it looks to the person's eye but um, through trial and error we have determined and figured out what proportions uh, these flies need to swim right and how to and, and to hook a fish So I've got that one uh, singed together pretty good. It's not wanting to push back Sometimes you have to play with them. There we go This body tubing can be a pain. I mean I used to absolutely hate this stuff then I started tying this pattern and I really started to understand the concept of having this body tube in there. What it's doing is it's creating it's creating a dam for that big long bucktail to sit against. So it's not going to be flattened out. It's going to keep a nice thick profile, a big fat profile of that fly as it gets wet and it's stripped through the water. So again the Body tubing can be a pain. It doesn't always work like you want it to. You just gotta manipulate it a little bit. One GoPro down. There we go, that one turned in there really well. Nice, go ahead and whip finish. Now I personally just use the super glue. Um, I think the super glue does really well on the plastic of the body tubing. Push that back. Now we're going to go with one more stack of bucktail here. Alright. 
Create that valley. Lock it down. This is where I'd like to go ahead and coat that bad boy again with some of the sallies. I mean, just look at the collars of that fly starting to come together, it's starting to really pop. Now I'm going to step up into some of the peach. This peach uh, is one of my favorite tails I've ever tied with. Um, then we did just get the new Tequila Sunrise in from Mid Midwest Bucktail. I am a big fan of that tail now. I mean, the fibers are five, six inches on it. And it's, I mean, one of the best tails I've ever seen. Now we've got with the local butchers, we're gonna start doing some of our own tails here. This winter, we've got probably 300 tails so far. Pretty dang excited about that. Now look at the collars of this fly just start to come together. You can't tell me that doesn't look like a, a fall fish or a sucker. I mean, if I was a muskie, I know we say that kind of stuff a lot, but if I was a muskie, there's no doubt I would eat that fly. Not yet, Flash. You are up next, but not yet. Doesn't have to be pretty, guys. It all gets hidden. All right, so let's do a little bit more of this flash, same way. In my opinion, which I'm sharing my opinion a lot tonight when it comes to this fly, but I guess since I'm the one making the video, you guys get to listen to my opinions tonight and I'm not going to get all weird and political and tell you my opinions of the world even though I think a lot of people would agree but I uh, I pretty much stay to myself I keep it keep it real don't get into that kind of stuff I tend to not focus on things that I do not have control over in my life politics and the world problems I just I have no control over so I uh, tie flies and really just stick to myself. Musky fish, that kind of stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and glue that up nice. Same thing here, we're gonna cut some of these back just because they will show once that gets wet. All right, we're moving into the front of the fly where we build the head. So let's go ahead and get that in. We're gonna take another break. Look at how that fly is coming together. Starting to look very, very nice. Good proportions, good colors. I like to use a clip on the tails, locks it in in the back there. All right, back in it, here we go. We're, we're gonna finish this thing out strong. So let's take a look here again. We got one stack of bucktail, then we got body tubing, bucktail, bucktail head. So there's two stacks of bucktail at the end. It's white and then it's a 
then it's a peach which we're going to use the tequila sunrise it's going to make the front of the fly a little bit lighter than the last one but that's no big deal all right so here we go let's throw that base down lock that lock that all together it is key to have a good base to how you have a good durable fly all right so we're going to start right back here create our valley created our valley we're going to take the peach We're going to take the peach, get those guard hairs out. We're going to do our uh, regular stack. If you've noticed, we haven't done a reverse stack of bucktail this entire fly. It's unnecessary, really. Now, you can do it here, and in fact, let's do it. What I like about that is it kind of covers up the shank connections look how much more that flares manipulate that around the hook in my early years of, of working with bucktail I felt like that was the hardest part to learn and um, one trick I guess I could share or thing I've learned is do loose wraps. Loose wraps, two loose wraps first and then manipulate that bucktail with your fingers. If you try to do too, uh, too thick a buck of, uh, of wraps there, it's hard to get that bucktail to move. So just do loose wraps. Now we're going to take this back over top. Now, the thing with doing a reverse tie, it's a little bit harder to get it to taper like you want. You've got to put a little bit more work into creating that shape of the fly. And that's just done by how you build this dam, how far back you take it. You work forward, you work backwards, you want a nice taper. somewhere right in there I like that I like that a lot we're gonna take the flash again now this time with the flash we're gonna get it to go clear around the fly so the way I like to do that is I'd spin this we're gonna work this right in there like that what that flash is doing is, is imitating imitating those scales on a on a fish on a bait fish my opinion again you cannot have too much flash all right we're going to do the body tubing again so we're going to throw some glue down now this section of body tubing is going to be the biggest piece of body tubing I've done yet and that's going to create that profile of the fly like I want so we're going to make this a little bit longer about an inch inch and a half All 
lock that in. Now let's go ahead and flip the body tubing. That one worked out perfect. Throw some glue down, just like so. Beautiful. Sometimes I like to use the whip finish tool. Um, maybe just makes it a little bit cleaner of a, of a whip finish than what I can do by hand. Um, maybe not. Sometimes it's a pain in the ass like that right there. There we go. It's hard to beat this GSP. I mean, this stuff is so strong. I mean, it's seriously almost impossible to break. The 200 GSP. It is strong, strong stuff. So there we are. Let's go ahead and flare that back. We got a nice big body tubing head there on it. Oh, this fly is looking great, guys. Very nice looking fly. So now we're going to do one of white. And then we're going to do, from there, we're going to do tequila sunrise into the head. So we got two, two more things of bucktail here before we get to the head. And then we're actually going to put some horns with the hackle on this. I call them horns. I mean, they're not really peck fins. Great in that valley. There's the valley. You can tell I've been nailed by that hook a few times. I've been tying a lot of musky flies lately, so that's just part of it. Now we're gonna go with a little bit thicker of a stack here. And that's gonna create more of a, a shoulder uh, is where we're at on this fly is the shoulder into the head and to me that is important to push water and to swim correctly if it's too thin in the front or too thick in the back uh, it just won't swim correctly so there you go get those guard hairs out we're going to do a reverse tie again. Manipulate. Oh, that thing just flared out perfectly. Lock that in. Yes, I like that. I like that a lot. We got plenty of space for our head. So the next part of bucktail is actually going to be part of our head. So next stack is going to be crucial. See how that's wanting to stay flared up already because of that body tubing in there. Now the key is to get that to work around that body tubing. So it is covering it up and there's not a massive gap in there. Just like so. Tapers looking good. We're gonna add that flash, last stack of flash, and then the horns and into 
into the last part so here's the flash we're going to go semi heavy heavy on it heavy on the flash I dig it all right, let's pick out the, the horns. Hopefully that didn't screw up uh, the focus. All right, we're gonna find two horns. All right, there they are. So the key with putting the horns is, is you kind of want them to cross. You lay this straight on top, just like so. like so now we're going to glue that good i'm going to check the camera make sure everything's recording properly uh, we we're getting low on battery so check that and i'll be right back all right guys here we are so we're going to take a nice big stack of that tequila sunrise and we're going to start the head of this fly now this is a pretty important part here we're going to create that valley again Nice big valley this time because this is going to create part of the head of this fly. Um, I like that darker spot. Some really long, long, long fibers. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a stack. Instead of a spin, I'm going to do a stack. Same concept. Haven't really been spinning it, but I've been manipulating it around the hook a lot. This time we're going to we're going to stack the top and the bottom. See how I went a little bit of a harder wrap. I didn't do a loose wrap there. I went a little bit harder because I'm stacking it. I'm not going to manipulate it as much. Rotate this around. See how that just flared together and just really nice. Now we are going to manipulate it just enough to kind of get those to kind of come together. That's how you tie a good Buford head. See how that just already flared out? Looks kind of like a Buford already. Pack that back. We got a plenty of space to do a nice big stack on the front here. Front, I should say. I think I said back. I meant front. I'm just gonna brush that thing out. Looks nice. I'll flare this back one more time. So, now I'm going to take the B side. You see, this is what we call the B side of a tail. Um, I actually like the B side of this 
this a little bit better. It's about the right size I'm wanting in length. We're gonna go ahead and stack some of the B side on this. This makes a mess with the guard hairs. That B side has a lot more guard hairs to it. Big heavy stacks on this head is key. Make sure you get enough material in there to create the size head you're wanting it to have. Now see I didn't do a, a valley on that one so it's not it's not flaring as much for me but that's okay because we'll we'll finish it out with a uh, dam in the front of it do another stack on both sides just to make sure I get a nice thick head all the way around this fly Again, it's key to have enough material here. Now we're gonna go through and trim a lot of this out and uh, shape this head, but if you don't have enough material on this head, you'll never get it to look, look right. All right, so that's a stacked head there. We're gonna spin that. We're gonna wrap this around through the middle. So that's actually locking all that stuff in there again, another way. This is gonna push some serious water, this type of head here. See how that's flaring out back over the eye of the hook? That's what you want. That is what you want. And then we're gonna pack this back to get that to sit back over, over the eye. Now we're crowding the eye just a little bit, but the more we sit here and manipulate this, we'll get it to go back there. The key is just to get a nice dam in front of that stack. You notice every time I wrap it's picking up hairs which is be because it is crowding the eye just a little bit. nice dam in front and then we're gonna go ahead and whip finish this fly now this fly looks pretty good already but we're gonna spend some time trimming the head which is not my forte that's usually when I have one of my buddy Nate Reese come in and he's a head fanatic he gives great head I mean he trimmed good head on the Buford flies So there it is. Finish off. 
Excellent. So now we're going to brush this out. Make sure we get all those loose fibers out of there. Go ahead and glue this. Top and bottom, guys. Top and bottom. You want that thread to go clear or that glue to go clear around this. Singe the ends. If anything loose. Alright, so now that we got that big head on there, we're going to come in with some curved scissors. We're going to start working that. Nice. We still got some battery left. So this definitely makes a mess. But the key is just to clean this up. I usually cut this while holding it, but I'm trying to keep it in focus for you, I'm leaving it on the vise. But I typically pick it up and hold it, which I probably will do to finish it out. But what we're doing is we're just creating a cone. We're creating a nice taper to that head. Um, Another way to finish a fly like this is with a brush. You use a brush on the head. I personally like these Buford heads. I think they push the most amount of water and uh, they just look good. The whole fly is bucktail. Why not just finish it out with bucktail in my personal opinion. But you can see it's starting to take shape. This, this is just a uh, this is art. This is a work in progress. You can sit and you don't want to take too much off. That's for sure. But you're just giving it a nice haircut. Working it clear around. Look at it from different angles. You'll see stragglers. And guys, that is about it. I'm gonna leave this head pretty big. We might come back and trim some more up later. But all in all, there's patches. Patches is tied again with one single 5 aught B10S hook in the back. We got two shanks up front, big head, nice taper to it. I like the color combo, kind of sucker-ish feel. Got the uh, big just copper butt to it so that thing flat really flashy in the water um, and then that body tubing is going to keep this thing light but keep that bucktail flared out keeping it some mass to it but this fly is super light for how big it is uh, there's the first one we tied there's a little bit difference in colors and sizes here but all in all it's the exact same platform um, Body tubing in there, two shanks, B10S hook, and uh, this is known to work. Five, uh, four of the muskie are all in that 40 inch range. Four out of the six, so come by the shop, pick this one up if you want her. Thanks. There'll be more, many more fly tying videos to come.